Hey guys, in this video I will be taking a look at Linux Mint 13, the release candidate. This is the version running Cinnamon 1.4. In case you aren't aware, there are now two main versions of Linux Mint. There is a version running Mate 1.2, which is basically GNOME 2 carried on. And there is um, this version. So let's um, get stuck into it. I'm currently on the login screen. The default login screen is the same in both the Mate and the Cinnamon versions. You have the logo, Linux Mint, welcome to machine name. You have the day, the date and the time. You have the option to log in. You have to enter both your username and your password. You have the option to um, change languages from the login screen. You can obviously change your session. There are a few different um, session options in this um, version. You have the known classic options. And we have um, actions, the um, shutdown action, the restart action, and the suspend action. So let me log in now, as this might take a little while. Um, I am running this um, version of Linux Mint inside of a virtual machine which has 2 gigabytes of RAM, just so you know. Uh, here is the welcome screen. Welcome to Linux Mint, release 13, codename Maya. This is the Cinnamon 64-bit edition. Um, I am going to quickly click on new features, so we can quickly go over them. So Mate 1.2, this is the last version which I reviewed. Um, I will put an annotation somewhere down the bottom of this video so you can have a look at my video for this version. Um, though anyhow, let's take a look at Cinnamon 1.4. Let's take a look at the pros and the cons. Um, it's among the sleekest and most modern looking environments. Um, features innovative features and emphasis on productivity with traditional desktop metaphors. Uh, built on rapid technologies and its development pace is really fast and it is very community active or its community is um, very active and it produces a lot of um, new themes and applets. Um, a lot of that is marketing um, jargon really. Um, it requires 3D acceleration which um, this virtual machine has and it might not work um, well for you depending on your graphics card and or drivers. Um, it is brand new and unfortunately not yet as stable as more mature and established desktop environments. So if you have an older computer or older hardware etc, then I highly recommend running the Mate 1.2 version. And I have already um, ran into a few um, glitches with the Cinnamon version even though I haven't been running it for very long. Um, it relies on GNOME 3 and Clutter, which are also both brand new and going through rapid transformations. So if you um, feel that you have, you know, a good computer with good hardware and you understand that um, this release might be a little bit buggy, then feel free to install it. Though I can't recommend it as a primary operating system, or not just yet. I am only running it inside of a virtual machine, though based on what I've seen, there are a few bugs. Um, but let's close that and let's um, get stuck into it. Uh, let's take a look at the taskbar first. We have the menu, which I will take a look at in a second. We have the show desktop button. We have a link to Firefox version 12. We have a link to the terminal. And we have a link to Nautilus, which is the file manager in this version of Linux Mint 3.4.1. Nautilus um, is quite a nice um, file manager. I have no real complaints. Um, and what else? Obviously your open applications will appear here. I quite find um, the taskbar interesting in Cinnamon. You have troubleshooting options here. You have the option to restart Cinnamon. Uh, looking glass and restore all settings to default. I don't know what that is. It must be a log of all of the errors or something. I'm not completely sure. Um, anyhow, uh, we have panel edit mode on and off. You must be able to drag things around, etc. So I'm going to leave it set to off. That must be the equivalent to locking the taskbar, I imagine. We have um, panel settings. So menu text, menu, or I could rename it to my name if I wanted to. 
you know, that isn't anything unique. I'm pretty sure you've been able to do that for a while. Uh, you can change the menu icon too. Though if you really like to make your, um, you know, system your own, then, you know, it's pretty neat how you can change the icon and the name of the menu. And you have a few other um, options here, like the menu hover delay, the ability to auto-hide the panel, uh, the desktop layout. You have tr traditional panel at the bottom, uh, flipped panel at the top. Whoops. And you have classic panels at the bottom and the, uh, panels at the top and at the bottom. Um, oh yeah, and you have to restart Cinnamon for the um, changes to actually take effect. So I'm not going to worry about doing that. And the panel launches are draggable. Whoops. Um, add remove applets. Let's see what um, comes up now. Um, so I imagine that these um, display down here in the taskbar, what happens if I select um, trash? So then the trash applet displays. And if you click on it, it links you to the trash folder. And if you right click on it, you have the ability to empty trash, open the trash can, remove from the panel, etc. You know, it gives you a lot of, um, you know, customization options, which is pretty nice. And we have other settings. Ah uh, yeah, here's a link to the cinnamon settings. Um, I will take a closer look at that in a minute. <clears throat> uh, we have our, you know, sort of connectivity option here. And you have the option to turn your network on and off with a click of a button. And there is a link to network settings. <clears throat> we have our volume control. You have the option to actually launch a music player right from here. Obviously, the default is Banshee in Linux Mint. Um, and I imagine when it's already open, all of your play, pause, controls um, should come here at the top. You can obviously adjust um, the volume. You have sound settings and output device. What else do we have here? Power settings. So well, this is in the laptop, so I'm not sure if that is supposed to display there by default if you um, install it on a desktop. Though I imagine that you can just um, hide the applet for that if you don't want it. Uh, what's this? Um, 80 recommended updates available. I won't bother going into that. And we have our calendar here, which is, you know, pretty nice. It's clean, simple. I quite like. I quite like how you have the individual um, month and year, rather than having to continuously you know, scroll through both at a time. And we have a link to date and time settings. So that's pretty much it um, for the taskbar, really. Let's take a look at the menu, which can be a little buggy, though I quite like um, the design overall. In um, the Mate, in, you know, all previous versions of Linux Mint and in the Mate version, you sort of have all of your favourites and you click a button to view all the applications. So it's a bit different here. You have all of your, you know, pinned applications, favourites sort of in the side here. Um, whereas, you know, you just have all of your applications here. So these are all of the pinned applications, really. We have Firefox, we have the Software Manager, we have Cinnamon Settings, which I'll take a look at in a second. We have um, XChat IRC, the Terminal, and Nautilus. And down here, we have a few different system options, um, the option to lock the screen, to log out, and to shut down the computer. And we basically have all of the application categories here on the left and on the right. We have all of the applications that fit into those categories. We also have a search bar here, which looks pretty functional. Um, before I go through all of the applications, I will quickly take a look at the cinnamon settings. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. We have a few panel settings, which we saw briefly before. A few um, calendar settings, you know, for the date format, etc. You know, whether or not you want to use network time. Um, hot corners. Um, this is quite interesting. I haven't had um, a look at this setting yet. I imagine it's going to be similar to how it works in Mac OS X and even in um, the new version of Windows 8. Uh, themes. Um, <clears throat> by your default theme is Nightlife Graphite. So let's take a look at a couple of the other themes. Let's take a look at the ice cream sandwich um, theme, which someone has obviously made. It's quite nice. It's sort of black and blue. And let's see what the file manager looks like. It doesn't seem to modify the actual icons. So 
it's not a full on theme. It's sort of it's more of a theme for just um cinnamon really, just the task bar and the menu. So it's quite nice how they include a few different themes. We have gnome, which looks all right. Um, what other themes? Loki. And they also move the menu around a little bit by the looks of it. Minty. Yeah, these themes um, don't look too bad really. There's actually a theme called Oh My God. Um, so yeah, these themes aren't too bad, though you're going to have to manually change, you know, the desktop background and your icon set by the looks of it, because it doesn't have any effect on, you know, those sorts of things. So I'm just going to put it back to the um, default for now. We have a few different effects, you know, for closing windows, mapping windows, minimising, maximising, unmaximising. I don't really want to change all of these really. So for example, there's maximizing windows. I can open a window quickly. Uh, and I can change it. It's set to ease in back by default. So what happens if I do ease in bounce? Will it change immediately? No, I don't know if um, anything changed um, then. Might need to restart cinema, which I don't really want to do right now. We have the applets, which I quickly looked at before. Extensions, you must be able to download different extensions. A few um, desktop settings. Um, you know, have the file manager handle the desktop. Computer icon visible on desktop. Home icon. Network servers icon. Trash icon. Show mounted volumes, um, etc. Only use workspaces um, on primary monitor requires a restart. Uh, a few different, um, what's this window um, customizations here? I won't go to all of them and a few different font runs as well. But let's quickly um, take a look at all of the default applications. Um, we have accessories, we have um, an archive utility or archive manager, calculator, character map, disk utility, we obviously have Nautilus, gedit, which is a basic text editor. We have a screenshot application, which is pretty much the same as in the mate version. Uh, we have a document viewer, we have GIMP, we have GDAM for you know managing all of your images, etc. Image viewer. Libre Office Draw, Simple Scan. We have a desktop sharing application. Uh, what application? Yeah, desktop sharing. Uh, where was I? We have Firefox, we have Pigeon for you know all of your MSN accounts, etc. Thunderbird is the um, default mail client transmission for BitTorrent. We have XChat for IRC. We obviously have um, all of the Libre Office applications here, which is basically a free version of Microsoft Office. Uh, sound and video, we have um, Banshee, which is obviously the default media player in Linux Mint. Let's see if this changes um, the volume control at all. Uh, yeah, it does. I quite like this, actually. It's a bit more functional than in um, Mate 1.2. I imagine that the album artwork would come up there with the artist, album, title, the play duration. And it's got a few more options here. You don't just have play, pause, back and next. So yeah, I quite like the look of that. And when I close that, I imagine that it just minimises. Uh, it's being a little bit buggy right now. So yeah, I imagine it just minimises. Um, and where was I? We have Procero, um, the disk burning utility, we have M player, movie player, sound recorder, VLC media player. We have a few different system tools, preferences and administration options. Um, I won't bore you and go through all of them. And we have places right at the bottom here. Um, I don't know if it's the most practical place to put them really. You know, you have your documents, music, pictures, videos, downloads. So yeah, I suppose it's, you know, it wouldn't take very long to quickly get to your places. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this um, video really. I'm not sure if I have missed anything. I probably have. Though um, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me. Um, I recommend taking a look at this in a virtual machine rather than installing it, um, you know, on your computer. 
um, and to remember that you will need to enable 3D acceleration and give the graphic card some memory if you want to do it in a virtual machine. Um, though, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend using it as a primary operating system just yet, or at least um, wait until the final release comes out rather than the release candidate. Uh, so that is it for this video, and thanks for watching.